How far would you go to help your best friends? Lend them $100? Drive them around for a whole day? Jump in front of a mounted machine gun during a full-scale war? Chinese soldier Huang Jiguang clearly loved his friends more than a lot of us do. He didn't have a car or $100, but he had bravery levels greater than most people in history and a willingness to give up everything to help his comrades. Let's take a look at the events leading up to Huang's incredible decision to use himself as a human shield to save his friends from some heavy machine guns. Born in 1931, Huang was raised on a farm with his family. However, the two decades he spent on Earth were plagued by warfare. The Chinese Civil War, the Japanese Invasion, World War II, and eventually the Chinese participation in the Korean War. The Korean War began on June 25, 1950, when Huang was 19. North Korean forces, backed by the Soviet Union and China, invaded South Korea as a part of a broader struggle between communist and anti-communist forces following the end of World War II. Fighting on behalf of South Korea against the U.S.-led United Nations, Huang left his life as a farmer and joined the People's Volunteer Army in March 1951. He became a runner, carrying messages between various units, and was awarded the Meritorious Service, third class, for his bravery and excellence in the role. In late 1952, North Korea launched Operation Showdown, a major assault on South Korea as peace negotiations began to deteriorate. South Korea sent a large number of forces, including Huang's 15th Corps unit, to reinforce the area where the offensive was taking place, known as the Iron Triangle. This is where our main story takes place. A prominent feature in the rugged terrain of the Iron Triangle was Triangle Hill, a mountainous outcrop coupled with another, known as Sniper Ridge, forming a V in the landscape. Located near the border between North Korea and South Korea, these ridges held significant strategic importance due to their position overlooking key supply routes and communication lines. Controlling them would allow one side to dominate the surrounding area and gain an advantage in the border conflict. As a result, the assault from the UN and the reinforcement from the People's Volunteer Army made for an epic battle. The UN forces sent in waves and waves of artillery, flattening the People's Volunteer Army, except for some highly fortified positions dotted throughout the ridges. The important communication lines between Triangle Hill and Sniper Ridge were cut, and despite the Chinese fighting with grenades, Bangalore torpedoes, bullets, and even rocks, they lost Sniper Ridge to the U.S.-led forces. Shortly after, on the night of October 15, 1952, Huang's company was tasked with capturing a key enemy position on Triangle Hill known as the Gloomy Slope, which was heavily fortified with machine gun nests and artillery. This was part of a counterattack that was ordered by the commander of the 15th Corps. The slope was well protected by UN soldiers, with machine gun nests and blockhouses dotted throughout the land. With more grenades and Bangalore torpedoes, Huang's unit was successful in taking out a few of the blockhouses low down on the slope. But this is where things got sticky. The enemy's well-trenched machine gun positions were particularly deadly, pinning down Huang's comrades and preventing them from advancing any further up the slope. A particular collection of these fortified locations was labeled Position Zero. Any attempt to overcome Position Zero failed, as many of the Chinese soldiers were mown down by the machine gun fire, cutting relentlessly through the army. Realizing the dire situation, Huang's commander came up with a Hail Mary plan to send a demolition team of three men to creep up to Position Zero and use explosives to take out the machine gun nests. This would allow the rest of the pinned down forces to charge up the hill and overpower the weaker locations behind Position Zero. Huang was one of the three men on this daring team. Armed with only a handful of grenades, the men began to crawl up the hill against the raining machine gun fire. With the machine guns looking down from the top of the hill, Huang's position was not particularly concealed. And within minutes of beginning their mission, one of the men was killed and the other gravely wounded, leaving him unable to continue the mission. Huang was left as the only man capable of continuing. What would you do in this situation? Observe the loss of your teammates and retreat to safety? Or push forward against seemingly impossible odds? With one grenade left in his hands, Huang made a final push to complete the mission alone. 
bullets bouncing from the ground in front of him, debris grazing his uniform. Miraculously, he kept low throughout the landscape. Dodging bullets and explosions, he got within throwing distance of the nest. Knowing this was his only chance, he pulled the pin on his grenade, took aim, and launched the explosive towards the blockhouse. It tumbled through the air, coming to rest on its intended target. However, landing on top of the nest instead of in it, the grenade failed at taking out the machine gun.